What's up guys, welcome to the video. So today I am going to just kind of go over how I think as a new trainer or someone who's been in the gym a little while that just isn't seeing really good results, how you should prioritize things to get the results you want. Uh, we'll call it the hierarchy of building muscle as a new lifter. So there's really gonna be three, four-ish steps involved in this. And it's gonna be very straightforward. I'm not gonna go into a crazy detail. We're gonna be focusing on big picture stuff, not the tiny things that don't make that big of a difference at the end of the day, because if you don't have this stuff down, you aren't gonna get anywhere. So, the number one, oh, dog's coming upstairs, sorry. So, the number one thing, the base of everything, nothing matters if you don't do this, is you need to create a stimulus. You need to go to the gym, you need to lift some weights, and you need to create a demand for your body to build muscle. If you don't do that, nothing else matters, right? You can eat all the food in the world, you're just gonna get fat, you can starve yourself, you're just gonna look skinny and maybe lose some fat. So, create the stimulus. And we do this by training within proximity to failure or to failure on each of our sets. If you're a new lifter, I like to tell people, train to failure. Um, oops, kicking my camera. Train to failure. Now, research shows you do not need to train to, you can get the same results training within, you know, two, three, maybe four reps of failure as the same person training to failure. However, as a new lifter, you don't know what failure is. You, if I told a new person, you know, in the gym, trained to two reps from failure at RPE 8 or RPE 7.5, they're going to leave like seven reps in the tank just because they, they don't know yet. So training to failure teaches you how it feels and how, you know, when you're going to be getting close to that. So as you learn, then you can kind of back off a little bit and, you know, train at an RPE 8 and do it a little bit safer of an approach. So train within proximity to failure. And then the second part of that is going to be to pr practice progressive overload. Now this goes beyond just adding more weight to the bar or adding more weight to the stack. Progressive overload comes in many different forms. This can be uh, decreasing rest. This can be tightening your form, harder contractions, adding more reps, you know, all of these things play into progressive overload. And over time, you want to see these things improve. Um, I don't know if you can hear my dog barking. Hopefully not. Um, so yeah, create the stimulus and do that through progressive overload and training within proximity to failure. Number two on this list is going to be fuel the stimulus. Now, this is going to be geared towards your goals, whether you're trying to grow, whether you're trying to lose weight. Now, obviously, in a perfect world, the thing that everybody wants to do is lose fat and build muscle at the same time, which you can do as a new lifter. You do have the ability to recomp if everything is perfect and you're doing things um, in the most ideal way, and your genetics allow you to do so. Uh, overall, it's just a good rule of thumb to kind of pick one and go with it. So... If you're trying to build muscle, being a small calorie surplus, it's not going to break down, you know, nutrition too deep in this video. Um, basically, figure out what your maintenance is, figure out what your calorie intake is that keeps your weight from not moving up, not moving down, which is probably where you're at right now overall. If you want to grow, increase it a couple hundred. If you want to lose weight and lose body fat, decrease it a couple hundred. Um, if you're new to lifting and you're creating a really good stimulus and your recovery is really good and all that sort of stuff, you can build muscle around maintenance as a new lifter or even in a deficit. But if you really want to optimize building muscle, being as a surplus, if you really want to optimize losing fat, being a deficit. That's just really how it, what it's going to come down to. Um, yeah, eat enough protein. It's going to be about 0.8 to 1.2 grams per pound of lean body mass. Um, if you don't know what your lean body mass is, just do body weight and you'll be fine. So high protein diet, eating a surplus or in a small deficit if you're trying to lose fat, you know, fuel that stimulus because um, plenty of people can do that first one. They can create the stimulus and then, you know, progression halts because they don't make it to that next level. And uh, that is why I have a job. So third one on the list. So we've got so far, we have create the stimulus. Fuel the stimulus. The next one is going to be optimized recovery. So this is going to be very general term for get enough sleep, seven to nine hours. Maximize your sleep is what I should say. So the general rule of thumb, right, is get seven to nine hours. That being said, if you're telling somebody who's 
consistently getting four hours to get get nine hours of sleep. Well, it's probably just not conducive to their lifestyle, right? And, and then, you know, it's in one year, out the other. So what I like to tell people is maximize your sleep. So what this means is cut out things that are unnecessary at the end of the night and that are contributing to you getting a little bit less sleep. Like, I understand that people have really busy schedules and a lot of times, you know, the best that they can do is get six hours. So for these people, you know, if you're getting four hours or five hours, but you know, you're on your phone for 45 minutes laying in bed before you go to bed, or you're watching Netflix for four hours, just maximize it, right? You don't need to cut these things out completely, but decrease the time of bullshitting so that it allows you to get a little bit better. Because look, five hours is better than four hours. Six hours is better than five. So if you can just maximize that, it's gonna go a long way, you're gonna feel better. And honestly, the longer you prioritize sleep, you'll realize how good you feel and you will always want to keep doing it. You know, I, I, when I was in the military, I spent the entire four years pretty much on no sleep. I was fine. I would stay up till 1am, wake up at five and go to work all day. And if I was lucky on my lunch break, catch a 15 minute nap, try and feel normal, pound caffeine, um, whatever. And then, you know, now if I beat myself up, if I don't get seven hours, just cause I know how good I feel and then I know what I need to function on and my, you know, my cognition and everything else is so much more optimal. My performance in the gym is so much more optimal. My recovery is so much more optimal. It's just going to pay dividends if you can prioritize sleep. So maximize sleep and sleep hygiene, um, sleep quality, and you will be smooth sailing from there. And then the last thing that we're going to put at the top of the list is going to be supplementation, which is pretty much the base of a lot of new lifters. They're kind of like, you know, what protein should I get? Should I use creatine? Should I not use creatine? Should I use BCAs? Should I take BCAs before, during, after? Uh, should I use uh, SARMs or should I use what, whatever, right? You know, everyone's ashwagandha is the new thing that everyone thinks is going to cure all their problems. So supplements, if you're a new lifter, you do not need them, right? They're, supplement, they're supplements. They're supplementing things in your diet. There are things that you can probably get from food, um, like protein powder. You do not need a protein powder. You can one scoop of protein powder. Think of that as a four ounce chicken breast when it comes to protein content. So, is it easy? Is it convenient? Yes, that's why. Typically, if I have to give recommendations, because people always give you that vague, like, "Oh, you don't need supplements." Well, if you want them, the ones that I recommend as a new lifter in regards to performance, I'm not going to be getting into um, health vitamins and things like that because everybody's you know, needs micronutrient wise are going to be different, but typically it's going to be like zinc, vitamin B or sorry, vitamin D, maybe vitamin B, um, magnesium, things like that. I don't know if I said magnesium twice. I don't know. Magnesium, vitamin D are kind of like my big ones. Uh, maybe omega three is not a lot of people eat fatty fish, but overall in regards to performance supplements, the things that I like are whey protein. I personally like to have both like a blend. I like like a K wasting, a K whey casein blend or even like egg white uh in there and i also like on hand i like to have one of those on hand and i also like to have a whey isolate on hand so um they just they mix differently they mix di differently in foods and shakes sometimes uh i prefer the slower digestion of like a blend and then um so yeah find one that tastes good one that digests good for you and then on top of that i like five to ten grams of creatine per day depending on how much muscle mass you carry. Typically, about five grams is kind of like the, you know, going dosage that they tell you. You could get away with three grams at keeping your muscles saturated. But creatine, you know, it's proven to have tons of benefits for strength. Um, it has some cognitive benefits as well. So I like creatine in there. It's probably the most studied supplement on the market. I don't use any of the other forms. I just use creatine monohydrate. It works good. There's a lot of myths behind that, which I'm not going to dive into. I'll make another video dissecting all those myths about it, but everyone should be using it. doesn't matter if you're trying to put on weight, whether you're trying to diet. Boy, girl, it doesn't matter. Use creatine. It's good. Um, and then after that, um, totally optional, but I like using a pre-workout or some sort of caffeinated beverage before my pre-workouts. Maybe I work out right now about four days per week, and I would say about at least three so sometimes all four days, um, I will use a pre-workout with caffeine. I've gone on, I go through periods where I only use stim-free pre-workouts that are loaded up with like pump products like citrulline and things like that. Uh, but currently, I'm using a lot of the different stimulant pre-workouts. So 
it's not going to do anything to you know build tons of muscle or whatever and people will tell you that you don't need it which you really you don't right but like i said it makes it more fun it makes the workouts enjoyable if it helps you push a little bit harder in a gym and if it gets you an extra two three reps on something that's worth it in my opinion now there's garbage products out there there are some seriously garbage products so if you have any questions and you need a recommendation for something i will give you my top recommendations based off preference your type of preferences your caffeine tolerance what you've used in the past i'm not just going to blindly tell you to use a product that i like because i have a discount code with them or something like that um but there are some bad products out there but there are a lot of really good ones and a lot of really good brands to look at um so maybe I'll make a video going over that as well, going over like good brands to look at. Um, but yeah, that is really that is going to be my uh, my three four steps to building muscle as a new lifter. So um, just gonna summarize it real quick. We have to create the stimulus, get in the gym, lift some weights, fuel the stimulus, give yourself enough protein, enough calories to grow, optimize recovery, get enough sleep, drink enough water. Um, do all that sort of stuff, keep your stress levels low, and then supplements if needed, not required, um, make your life easier, and maybe get you know one or 2% more benefit out of these things. So if you have any questions about coaching, link in the bio to my descript to my website, uh, follow me on Instagram, like, comment, subscribe on here, and have a good day.